Um, another cost is how much a car itself costs. Now, personally, I've never been a new car buyer. I just, to me, how much a car costs, I, I think I can use that money better. I think I could use it to pay off my house or to invest in a photovoltaic system or something along those lines. So for me personally, I've been a used car buyer. I buy a used car, put a lot of miles on it, uh, take it apart, recycle the parts, take it to the junkyard, that sort of a thing. Now on a Tesla Roadster, the Tesla Roadster Sport model cost more money than I owe on my house right now. Uh, it's right around $130,000. Now my car, on the other hand, including buying the car in the first place, I built for about $1,300. So, you know, let's just move the decimal point over. Now, I don't know how many people there are in this room right now. Let's say it's 100 people. Think about this. Like on the Oprah Winfrey show, she like, uh, you know, gives away prizes and things. What if right now I said, 99 people, look under your seat. You've got a key for an electric car. Because for the price of one Tesla Roadster, me and 99 other people could all be driving our own electric cars. That's pretty cool. I was talking with a friend and he said, you know, another way to look at this is either you can afford an electric car or you can't. And in my case, this is an electric car that I can afford. And there are some great cars coming, but they're not here yet. And like I said, I'm not a new car buyer anyways. So even when we do get electric cars in the area, I'm probably not going to be buying one. But by the time they're here, I've already, I've already been driving my own electric car for about three years. Uh, as I said, um, you need to start with a car. And what I've done is I haven't really built an electric car. What I did was a conversion. And this is important for many legal and governmental reasons. When you take a car and you put in an electric motor, it's still the same car. Technically, my car is a hot rod. Talk to my insurance lady. It's a hot rod. <laughs> I, I, I actually I called up my insurance person and said, yeah, I've, I've got this idea. I want to do this on a car. And she says, so it's probably going to go maybe not as fast. Yep. Um, it's definitely not going to go as far. Nope, no, it won't. And you want me to insure this? Yep. And she had absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. And actually, later, people have told me, you know, sometimes for collector cars and things like that, where people don't put as many miles on them, you can actually get a break on your insurance. And I need to write that as a note to myself because I still haven't called her about that. But uh, for a car, you definitely want something uh, lighter weight, uh, something simple. You definitely want a manual transmission. It is possible to build an electric car with an automatic transmission. It's more complicated and it's less efficient. And it seems like manual transmissions are kind of going the way of the dinosaur almost. They're getting a little harder and harder to find. But a nice used car with a manual transmission can make an excellent electric car. Um, I was looking at uh, Saturns, Dodge Neons, um, you know, kind of middle size to smaller manual transmission vehicles. And the other thing, just something affordable. I bought my car for 500 bucks. Um, I wonder if I've, let's see if I got um, this is actually a dramatic reenactment of my test drive of the car. Because there were a few little quirky things about the car that uh, made it a little bit more affordable. One was that the starter worked great, but the, uh, the starter um, fuse kind of didn't exist. So the seller said, oh, that's no problem. I'll just hold a wrench across there. And then you can, you can fire it up. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, that's good. And he's like, oh, well, you got to leave the hood up. And the other thing was the transmission wouldn't disengage from the engine, which meant that as soon as you turned on the car, the starter would engage the flywheel. The flywheel is connected to the, the motor, to the transmission, to the wheels. So here I am. This guy's holding a wrench up under the hood. I can't see anything. That's why my head's sticking out the side, because I'm trying to see around the hood. I turn the key. He's running alongside the car, holding the wrench on there. To, holding the wrench there to you know, keep the starter going as the thing gets going. And then I can only do left-hand turns around the block for my test drive. <laughs> so here I am. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to make this into an electric car. It doesn't need a starter. And I know I'm going to probably be modifying the transmission, so I don't think that's a problem either. So I'll lowball this guy. And uh, I don't know, I said something like 200 bucks or something like that. And unfortunately, this was a younger guy in his 
uh, dad was there who was a much better negotiator. And <laughs> so we settled, on, we settled on $500 for this car. And it, it's, it's definitely worth it. It's a, it's a very nice $500 car that I've been very, very happy with. Um, in doing an EV conversion, um, the main thing, first you've got to find a car. Then when you get that car, you take out the engine, you pre replace the engine with an electric motor. Uh, to do that, you're going to need some sort of an adapter plate, some way to physically connect the motor to the transmission. Yes, we're going to reuse that transmission. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Another thing you need is a coupler. This is going to be a custom part. Uh, what the coupler does is it takes the place of the original flywheel and clutch. Because on a manual transmission car, the way the engine connects to the transmission is with a, a spinning heavy plate, which is the flywheel, and a clutch. And they kind of connect together like that. I didn't use any of that. I really don't know much about clutches and machining and everything. And uh, you really don't need them. Um, also, you're going to need to get uh, some batteries and a way to charge those batteries. Uh, first thing I did was I pulled the engine out. This was a Geo Metro engine. Uh, what you can't see in this photograph is the clothesline going up out of the top of the photograph to a pulley and me, you know, just pulling the engine out like that. And then, of course, right then, that's when somebody calls on the cell phone. I'm like, oh, my hands are full. Can't answer the phone. Is that a bicycle chain? Probably is a bicycle chain. You know, like, like I said, I'm, I, I'm not a machinist. I'm not a car guy. I don't have an engine hoist. I had some clothesline and a couple of pulleys kicking around, though. And I had some bike chains and some things like that. Um, also, when I got the engine out, I pulled the, uh, the transmission out. So here's the, uh, the transmission. And then once I had both of those out, I was just really excited because now I had a car with no engine, no transmission, very uh, uh, kind of a highlight in the project. Feels really good. We call this process de-icing. ICE stands for Internal Combustion Engine. So if I say ICE, we're talking about a big, hot, inefficient lump of metal in most people's cars. Um, I found the car. Now I needed a motor. 